So the last thing that we are going to talk about today are how hormones are going to help regulate gastric motility. Now, before jumping into some of the specific hormones, I first just want you to think about the idea that we want our gastrointestinal tract to be ready to go, ready to digest food when it arrives, um, ready to move food through the digestive tract in a regulated manner, not too fast, not too slow, but then also to inhibit or turn off the secretion of gastric juices when we no longer need them. So hormones are gonna help us do that. I'm gonna start by introducing the hormone gastrin. Gastrin. So gastrin is a hormone that is produced in the stomach and also in the duodenum. And gastrin is secreted in response to food reaching the stomach. It's also secreted in response to just thinking about food. And the function of gastrin is to stimulate um, the release of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen from the stomach. So those are the components of our gastric juice. Um, and uh, gastrin is also going to help stimulate gastric and intestinal motility to start get thi getting things moving because we know that either food has arrived or food is coming. The next hormone that I will introduce you to is called cholecystokinin, also abbreviated as CCK. So CCK is secreted by the small intestine and CCK is secreted specifically in response to lipid arriving in the small intestine. And CCK is then going to go and stimulate the pancreas to release enzymes um, from, to release a, a whole you know, cocktail of enzymes into the small intestine. CCK is also going to stimulate the gallbladder to secrete bile into the duodenum. So really what's happening here is the small intestine senses that lipids have arrived. We are ready to digest. So in order to digest our food, we need to get a cocktail of enzymes from the pancreas, and we also need to get a bunch of bile from the gallbladder. So that's what CCK is going to stimulate. Um, and then another hormone that we have is called secretin. Secretin is secreted by the small intestine. And secretin is, um, it's secreted in response to acidic chyme arriving in the small intestine. Because remember that the chyme in our stomach is very acidic with all that hydrochloric acid. Once that acidic chyme arrives in the small intestine, then the small intestine is going to secrete the hormone secretin. And secretin is going to go and stimulate the pancreas to release bicarbonate. Remember that uh, the pancreas is going to secrete bicarbonate and this is going to help neutralize the acidic chyme as it enters the small intestine, and that way it can make the, um, the fluid less acidic, increase the pH, so that it'll be at a pH that is appropriate for all of those pancreatic enzymes to be catalyzing their reactions to digest the macronutrients. So far, all of these are hormones that are involved in stimulating the gastrointestinal tract, stimulating it to move, stimulating it to secrete more enzymes, more um, solutions like bile to help us in the digestion process. But we also want to make sure that we can turn off digestion um, when we are when we are done. So first, I'm going to introduce you to another hormone that is called glucose-dependent insulin insulinotropic peptide, uh, abbreviated as GIP. GIP is secreted from the small intestine, and it is secreted in response to glucose, amino acids, and fat in the small intestine. Now, when we think about glucose and amino acids, those are gonna be the broken down, the digested components of our larger macronutrients. And GIP is going to go back and inhibit gastric secretions. So once we have these digested macronutrients in our small intestine, that means that we can say, okay, stomach, you can, stop, you can start um, slowing down. You don't need to secrete as much gastric juice anymore. Um, the uh, GIP is also going to stimulate the pancreas to secrete insulin. And that kind of also makes sense because we know that now we're at a place where we have digested our carbohydrates into glucose. So that's, that glucose is gonna be getting absorbed into our blood. So GIP is going to tell the pancreas, hey, get ready, start to secrete some insulin so that we can absorb that glucose from our bloodstream into our cells. The next hormone I will introduce you to is called uh, PYY. And PYY is secreted by the ileum and large intestine. And 
and PYY is going to be secreted to inhibit gastric secretions and also inhibit secretions from the pancreas. So this is again a similar idea where once we have um, fat that has processed all the way down into the ileum and even a tiny little bit that might be left in the large intestine, that is gonna be telling us that, okay, we're, we're done with the early part of digestion. We can tell the stomach, stop secreting gastric juice. We can tell the pancreas, stop secreting enzymes. We don't need any anymore. We've, we're done with that part of the process. And then the final hormone I will introduce you to is somatostatin. So somatostatin is secreted by the stomach, by the pancreas, and also by the small intestine. So let's write that over here. Somatostatin. And the function of somatostatin is actually to go and turn off um, the other gastrointestinal hormones. So turn off some CCK, we'll turn off some gastrin. Um, somatostatin is also going to start to slow down the motility of the gastrointestinal tract because we are starting, we're getting to the end of the process. We don't need quite as much movement anymore. So somatostatin is going to have these inhibitory effects on other GI hormones and also an inhibitory effect on movement through the GI tract. So just for your reference, I have all of these hormones uh, written out with their functions and where they're located um, in this nice table for your reference. And that wraps up our lecture on the gastrointestinal tract.